Corps is happening now. This is not something that we're going to be looking at five years from now or ten years from now. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, James Reinder, who's going to uh, touch on these subjects and then take it from there. James? So these are three core concepts. Scalability is a very important concept, the concept that you want your program to be able to take advantage of additional cores as they become available. It's a topic that is well worth getting practice with. Correctness, there are a few programming issues that can come up with programming concurrency, things that can lead to non-deterministic programs, data races and deadlocks. And these are very important to understand the techniques to avoid them and the techniques to debug them. And finally, maintainability of programs. This is where I find that I need or get the opportunity to talk about abstractions a great deal. People are looking for ways to write their programs at a, at a sufficiently high level that they aren't down doing essentially assembly language of parallelism, which would be raw threads like Windows threads or P-threads. Let's turn now to Herb Sutter. As I said, Herb uh, has been working uh, in parallelization from the software side for, for a long time and, and is well renowned as, as an expert in that. Herb? To get that free lunch back of being able to ship an application and have it run well on today's hardware, better, which often means faster, on tomorrow's hardware, better still on next week's hardware that has more and more cores, that's going to require us to write stuff in a different way. We have tools to do this today. They're just too hard to use. They're, not, they're what you would expect in a niche market. We need to do for them what we did for objects and for GUIs to bring them into the mainstream. The magnitude is that this is going to require change across the whole software stack. The speed is that we could easily have 100 core chips today. And to give context, other software waves that we have seen in the industry, in particular the GUI and object waves, took into the mainstream tools and paradigms that had been around since the 60s. You could write GUI applications in Win16 with the C API. You could do objects in Simula. But these are tools that were great for the niche market. To really bring GUIs and objects in the mainstream, you needed things like Objective-C and C++ and Java. You needed tools for GUIs like MFC and OWL, languages like Delphi and Visual Basic. And so that is the same thing we're going to be seeing with the concurrency wave. And the main difference is that we can predict it with confidence that it's coming. So we're just at the beginning of that now. I just blogged yesterday about the concurrency land rush, where now we're starting to see things like Intel's threading building blocks and their software transactional memory prototype compiler. Microsoft, just last week, we announced the .NET parallel extensions. You can download the bits and play with them with Parallel Link and the Task Parallel Library. This is the beginning of a new wave of tools that are trying to bring this into the mainstream. Concurrency is simple to segment well. There are three major requirements. The first two pillars are about expressing concurrency. The third one, where I've seen in the chat window, there's already been questions about, is controlling concurrency, maintaining consistency. So pillars one and two are, show that there are really two major groups of concurrency we want to express. The first one is isolation, just to do stuff asynchronously. Get work off the GUI thread. Today we use threads and open MPI. In the future, we'll have things like Java has a futures, and that's a very popular paradigm coming in also with the, the .NET task parallel library, the idea of a future result, the idea of tasks that run asynchronously being easy to express rather than cumbersome. But to get the answer faster is Pillar 2's territory, scalability. We want to exploit parallelism in data structures, algorithm structures. And today, thread pools and OpenMP cover this territory, but we want to do better. And then finally, the third pillar, once you've expressed all this concurrency, greater, you're going to step on your objects and corrupt them. We don't want to do that. We want to have programs that are race-free and deadlock-free, and we have a long way to go. Herb, tell us what, what sort of things we might expect from C and C++ in the future in terms of parallelism. Plenty of vendors of C++ as well as other languages, including Intel with their software transactional memory prototype compiler, and Microsoft soon, although I'm not making any announcement today, are looking at the community previews of extensions to what would C++ look like, what would the standard library look like, what would STL look like to be able to do pillar one and pillar two concurrency, to be able to do asynchronous isolated work better, to do, be able to do scalable get the answer faster on more cores, work better. So there's work being done actively in product and also in the standard, in the C++ space in particular. You know, one thing that I've read, uh, been reading quite a bit about is GPUs. GPUs 
today are uh, uh, interesting to look at but extraordinarily difficult to program for a variety of reasons, they can get some interesting results. In general, most people will find that using a multi-core processor will give them more performance, but there are some limited domains where a, a GPU may give better performance. But I definitely think that GPUs have a role in multi-core of the future. And so I think that if we look at more and more cores in the future, we're going to look at how do we connect them to each other. And cur the current system of routing back all the interactions to a central memory is not going to continue. We're going to go to NUMA. We're going to go to pipelines um, like in GPUs. We're going to go to things like that, depending on the programming models we can um, create for them. So um, GPUs are definitely in our future. And um, you can definitely count on seeing um, innovations from um, every silicon vendor, including Intel, in, in this space. And I think uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We've, we're running a little over our time slot here. But uh, I want to thank all of you who have uh, uh, taken the time to, to, uh, to participate and, and to, to sit in on this session and for your excellent questions uh, that you provided. Uh, I'd particularly like to thank uh, James and, and her. things where education and parallelism pretty much needs to start in the schools. Uh, 